Hey guys, welcome to Hard Dose, our new show where we try to give weekly expedited commentary on the week's news. I'm Brian McBalls, and we got Jade, Jordan Wade here with us. Jordan Wade. Jordan Wade, right here, live from California. <laughs> yeah, he moved to California, man. So how, how you loving it over there? Uh, the weather's nice. Uh, it's 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 pretty much always sunny. Uh, it's been overcast a few times, but it's been weather's always nice. So that's a good thing. Got that that weather tax, man. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, we t- talk about Lucas Arts first. Uh, Disney has closed Lucas Arts, and uh, I don't know. Wh- why don't you give me your impressions of that when you first heard it, uh, Jordan? Well, when I first heard uh, that Lucas Arts was being closed down by Disney, I was initially really bummed, just because I had fond memories of Lucas Arts. You know, games like Star Wars Battlefront and you know X Wing and all these different games. But then the more I thought about it. I thought, what have they actually produced in the past decade that I've actually played and enjoyed? Because I couldn't think of one game that LucasArts has made in the past decade that I liked. Mm -hmm. Yep. I I felt the same way. I I was a little disappointed at first because you're right. They have put out some great games in the past. And then, like you, I thought, man, you know, like I played like, um, what was it, Uh, Force Unleashed? And I thought Force Unleashed was okay, but... The, other than that, I couldn't come up with anything that, that really wowed me in the last uh, decade. And uh, it is a kind of a tragedy that 1313 won't see the light of day. Yeah, that is the big bummer about that. Is we won't get to see that game. That game looks so darn good, too, at, uh, at E3. Oh, yeah. And it, I like the idea that it was going to be um, a darker, grittier Star Wars based on, like, laser combat and, like, bounty hunters. Yeah. Because um, that would be, a, like, a really good change of pace from the fast-paced, like, Jedi, like, Cartoon Network stuff they got going on right now. Oh, most certainly. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, in a way, it's kind of like that Disney gave him a, like, a mercy killing, I guess. Yeah, I guess uh, that's the best way to look at it. Uh, I think... I think we're going to have fond memories, but, I mean, at, at the end of the day, we know there's going to be more Star Wars games made. It'll just be made, you know, by another studio or another company, and that, that might be a good thing. Oh, yeah. I agree. Um, and uh, let's move on to uh, the Xbox Always Online drama. Uh, this week, one of the uh, Microsoft employees, uh, Adam Orth, he was uh, kind of went off the handle on Twitter a little bit. Um, I guess at first he was kind of joking with one of his associates, um, a developer at BioWare, and then he kind of started offending people when he was like, uh, he was basically saying, hey, you don't have broadband? Deal with it, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, like, so um, I don't know. That was kind of funny to see that unfold. And uh, I guess news uh, was released yesterday that he has left Microsoft. Uh, oh, really? He's, he's, le- he's gone from Microsoft now. He has left Microsoft. Yeah. So I don't know if he, it, they kind of like talked him into stepping down or. <laughs> I mean, there's not, you know, obviously not a full 100 record, you know, 100% record of what happened, but... Well, I mean, if you're going to say the disparaging remarks to a, to a portion of your customer base, I mean, I guess you're you're on a quick way out from the company. Oh, yeah. But I think it's just, re- I mean, this is something we know that's eventually going to happen, that consoles are going to be online all the time. I think it's a little crazy to think it's going to be this generation, because there is still a good chunk of the population that doesn't have access to broadband internet. So I don't know how they're going to have access to Xbox Live and stuff like that if the console's got to be on all the time. So... I'm interested to see what Microsoft, how Microsoft responds to this news. I mean, if it is in fact true, then that, I mean, it's it's revolutionary. But I think they're putting the cart ahead of the horse in this one. I agree. Uh, going 100 percent online, I don't think that they can afford that in this in the way the market is right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, the console market is kind of shaky as it is already, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. And and uh, yeah, I mean. That's a big mistake, you know. If that if that goes wrong, that could be that could potentially be a, a system killer for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, well, so let's move on to the next thing. Uh, the next big news that came out uh, this week, actually within the past couple of days, is that uh, Batman: Arkham Origins was announced, and that'll be released by Warner Brothers Interactive. But it's you know it's it's another chapter in the Arkham series that Rocksteady started, but Rocksteady is not making this game. Uh, but they did say that this is, like, I guess, a prequel. It's the event. It's it's events well before Arkham Asylum, and it's I guess more of toward the beginning of Batman's uh, origins, hence Arkham Origins. But I guess it's going to take place in Gotham City, which is cool. But uh, Brian, how do you, uh, are you excited about this announcement? Yeah, um, I've I've actually only played through Arkham Asylum, and I loved Arkham Asylum. Uh, Arkham City is sitting on my shelf right now. I just haven't had game time to get to it. 
So, um, I mean, I'm thrilled they're making another one. Especially, I've, I've heard nothing but good things about Arkham City. Yeah, Arkham City was fantastic. That's definitely one of the better games from this console generation. I'm a little bummed it's not Rocksteady working on it. I mean, it's, it's fine. We've seen other teams take over franchises, and, and usually it's good. It's positive results. Um, but I think this adds fuel to the fire that Rocksteady might be working on a Justice League game uh, instead of the next, uh, well, sort of the next chapter in the, uh, in the Batman Arkham uh, saga. Oh yeah, no. I mean, hopefully they could take what you know what Rocksteady laid out for them mm-hmm. and just run with it. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, let's bring up. Uh, I wanted to just talk briefly about uh, this uh, recent season of The Walking Dead. Um, I really loved the first half of season three, and I was pretty disappointed by the way they ended it. Felt like it kind of went down with a whimper. Mm-hmm. And I, I understand you haven't seen it yet, right, right, Jordan? Right, but if you're gonna go ahead and talk about the things that bother you, because it's it's my own fault that I didn't get to that point yet. But I'm interested to hear why you were so disappointed. Because going into the hiatus, it was it was so strong, it looked so good. And then I watched the first couple of episodes after the mid season uh, break, and I it wasn't quite up to the same standard that the first half was. Yeah, um, I would just say like it's, it felt like the second half after they invaded. Um, the city. I forgot the name of the city. All of a sudden. Um, uh, anyways, yeah. I, when I, they got when they got when they when they broke out Merle, the Dixon brothers. Yeah. And uh, it just seemed to got to it got to like a stalemate where Rick's like, "All right, everybody, we're going to war, but first we're going to sit around for five episodes." <laughs> and you know they had they had some interesting stuff going on. It yeah. wasn't as slow as the first half of season two. Oh goodness. But no. oh yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know. It just kind of like fizzled out. Um, they had a scene with Lori that I, I I suppose they were trying to make a very intense scene and have you know I guess they assumed a lot of people liked her not Lori um, uh, Andrea Andrea there yeah. we go there we go her name is Lori in real life that's why you got we got confused there. yeah 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 so um, they have a tense you know I I I can only assume they wanted it to be an intense scene but I get the feeling that the the fan base doesn't really care for TV show Andrea. And so she just kind of looked like an idiot trying to pick up those pl- – <laughs> she, she was trying to pick up pliers with her feet. And every other second, she would turn to look at uh, the zombie on the floor. Or, you know, w- she was waiting for Milton to turn into a zombie. <laughs> and sh- she wasted her whole time. And, uh, yeah, she ends up getting killed for it. And I can't say I'm sad to see her leave. I mean, nothing against the actress. I think she did, you know, well with what she was given. But I feel like TV show Andrea just made a lot of – a series of bad decisions throughout the whole show. Yeah. Um, and on that note, like they were building up to this big battle with the governor versus Rick, you know, or, or you know, two two teams clash, and um, the governor he came in quick and hit the prison, and it was the weakest attack ever. Nobody even got wounded. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then at the end, uh, governor walks away scot free, and he's you know lives the plunder again. I guess. That's so ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, and I have a feeling they traded in Andrea for a whole bus full of Andreas because they pick up the they picked up the Woodbury folks, and it's, it's like a whole elderly. It's like a whole um, bus full of elderly people. <laughs> so it's like they got fresh meat for the grinder in season four. There you go. There you go. Dead uh, bodies. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and wrap this up because uh, okay. we're gonna try and keep these uh, hard doses really quick and to the point. Um, I'm going to close out with some site announcements because we haven't done any site announcements in a while. Um, in case you haven't noticed, That's Alt is being pushed to a bi-weekly schedule. Um, it's a show that takes a lot of production time, and we figure we can focus on a variety of other shows while you know we push this to a bi-weekly schedule. So, um, yeah, keep continue to check those out bi-weekly. We're hoping every other Friday to put out one of, one of the That's Alt episodes. Um, and also, we want to officially welcome Metal Geeks to Altness.com, hosted yes, yes. by Kerry G and John Michael. These guys are some funny dudes. They're pretty awesome. I've listened to several of their casts, and they got great chemistry. Uh, Kerry G, he's actually been um, on the MSR cast, which is um, a part of Metal Injection. And they've done over 100 episodes interviewing some of the top, um, some, some of the big names in metal. Uh, so if you're definitely a geek and a metal lover, you should check out um, Metal Geeks because um, it blends the two you know, subjects harmoniously. Um, and that's all we had for this week, unless you wanted to add something else on here, Jordan. Well, I figured I think we should close out each episode talking about what we're playing and what we're watching. So, Brian, what, what video game are you currently playing? Bioshock Infinity. How is and that going? I, 
Love it. Okay. Love it. Um, I haven't played a game, well, a single player game like this in a while that has gotten me like so excited. And the story is just really interesting. the The setting is beautiful. The graphics are very nice. The gameplay is fun. I, like I really have very little complaints on this game, and I I recommend it to everybody. Yeah, I'm a huge Bioshock fan. I'm I'm looking forward to playing that pretty soon. Uh, right now, I'm actually playing, still playing MLB The Show. Uh, that. That takes up most of my time. I've delved into Spec Ops a little bit. Uh, Spec Ops Online that came out last year, and that's pretty interesting. And surprisingly, I'm actually doing a little bit of uh, Demon Soul uh, and Demon Souls, and I'm, I'm kind of enjoying that. It's masochistic, but I'm enjoying it for whatever reason. But that's what I'm playing right now. And uh, Brian, what are you currently watching? Oh, of course, Game of Thrones season three. Hell yeah, hell yeah, loving that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I want to say we're going to put out some uh, an episode on that in the future, so we'll, yes. we'll definitely go into more detail in the future on that. Yes, definitely. Um, and uh, that, yeah, that's the main thing I'm watching right now. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm watching Game of Thrones. Uh, I'm watching Mad Men, but I've actually been watching a whole lot of King of the Hill on uh, Netflix. I didn't watch a whole lot of it during its first run, but I've been nonstop watching old episodes of King of the Hill, so that's what I've been watching currently. I tell you what, man, and them Y2K, man, and them the mainframes are gonna cr- come crashing down on like that, that grid, man. I like a damn apocalypse now, man, and I'm lying around now. The horror. The horror. So, uh, yeah, man. First, get, you know, episode one down the pipe, so, uh, we'll talk about some, uh, some of next week's news, and, um, yeah, we'll see everybody next week. Alright, see you next week. Bye. <laughs>